Joining me now is managing partner with Airline Weekly, Seth Kaplan. Seth, good to see you. Good to be back, Jose. So tell me about this whole, you know what, the seats aren't small enough. Let's add another one. <laughs> yeah, you know, this is just the most visible example yet, but not the only one of a trend that a lot of people don't realize. You know, I think almost everybody by now realizes that some airlines have been taking away legroom, but more quietly, yeah, they've been taking away a little elbow room too. American Airlines actually here in the U.S. was the first a couple years ago to, on its Boeing 777s, I mean, that's a plane that almost all of us have flown on if we've gone abroad, they said, you know, instead of nine seats across, let's go to 10. And because that that plane is a little more narrow than that A380. That's even less elbow room than those A380 passengers are going to have. So the A380, is this the largest plane, period, or among the largest planes? It is, Jose. And, you know, if you've been to some of the largest airports in America, JFK, Miami, and so forth, you might have seen this plane. It has two decks all the way across, uh, not just like on the older 747s where you see a little bit of a second right. deck. So, yeah, it, it could hold in some cases soon in excess of 600 passengers. And, and now, oh yeah, packing 11 across instead of 10 in economy. So, Seth, also this week, the Department of Transportation is looking into whether crowding more seats into planes could, could pose a safety issue, potentially potentially making an emergency evacuation more difficult. How can we, well, can we expect any changes or recommendations from the DOT? Yeah, it's, it's a good question, Jose, and we'll see. You know, what hasn't changed is that they always evaluate, you know, how long does it take to evaluate, to evacuate, rather, an aircraft, okay? And so, you know, there are limits that have always been there. That hasn't changed. You cannot put more seats than those limits, which were established years ago. The difference now is that some airlines are pushing closer up against those limits, but limits that the FAA, at least until now, has considered safe. And I want to talk about two former TSA officers in Denver, a man and a woman, who could be facing criminal charges after allegations they, well, manipulated passenger screening systems so one of them could grope male passengers. The TSA just issued this new statement, quote, the vast majority of our employees act with the utmost integrity and professionalism every day, but unfortunately the conduct of a few can do significant damage to the entire workforce, and this damage is very difficult to overcome. Seth, what's your reaction to something like this? Yeah, it, it's really the case that, I mean, like in every workplace everywhere, you have that many thousands of people and you're going to have a few bad apples. Unfortunately, obviously, when we're talking about something like aviation security, it, it matters in a way that it might not matter in, in other walks of life. But you can bet, yeah, that they're going to take extra steps to make sure that sort of thing can't happen again. Yeah, I've got to tell you, the TSA folks I deal with all the time are just top notch. Hey, uh, Seth, before I let you go, are you a big uh, Star Wars fan? Uh, enough that, yeah, that I, I'm, I'm excited about that on the pond plane, right? They're going to paint it in uh, Star Wars yes. livery over in Japan. R2D2. Yeah, absolutely. And looking forward to, yep. Uh, Seth, thank you, buddy. It's good to see you. You got it, Jose.